Hollywood, California, the Lux Radio Theater presents Claudette Colbert and Fred McMurray in Alice Adams with Walter Connolly. Lux presents Hollywood. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first of the 1938 programs in your Lux Radio Theater. I say your Lux Radio Theater because it is your loyalty to our products, to Lux Toilet Soap and Lux Flakes that makes these productions possible. We want you to know that we sincerely appreciate your enthusiastic support. Tonight, we bring you Claudette Colbert, Fred McMurray, Walter Connolly, Ann Shoemaker, and Benny Baker in Alice Adams. We also bring you, as special guests, George Harrell, most famous photographer of Hollywood stars. Our music is directed by Louis Silvers. And now, here's our producer, Hollywood's internationally known director. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. The praises of Claudette Colbert have been sung in many ways and by many tongues. But for sheer enthusiasm, nothing I've seen or heard approaches the verbal acrobatics of a foreign critic printed in a newspaper in Manchuria. The article reached me last week. It's a review written in English of Cleopatra, the last film in which I directed Miss Colbert. And the temptation to read a portion of it is more than I can resist. Our Oriental commentator writes as follows. Quote, All that Cleopatra possesses is lavishness not only but also it contains some fine acting, especially in part of glamorous, flagrant, and competent Claudette Colbert, who makes the role as Cleopatra every inch an L. Eyeing from artistic points, this is just to get the passing mark to Boots. There is no space to hear repetition in these columns that the content of Cleopatra is too popular to insist it. You, the fans, certainly be struck all of a bump if you see the DeMille for sets of several thrilling scenes and of dancing by the Egyptian girls who swing and swirl, revolving through grand marble halls and on the sumptuous barge to the swish of gully slaves. Unquote. Tonight, Claudette Colbert comes to you without the swish of gully slaves but I'm certain that her performance in the title role of Alice Adams will, to borrow a phrase, strike you all of a bump, whatever that may mean. We hear Fred McMurray in the role of Arthur Russell, which he played in the screen version. A couple of weeks ago, Fred made the first personal appearance in his motion picture career. It occurred in San Francisco in connection with the opening of his new picture, True Confession. It was a triumphant event, quite a contrast to Fred's last appearance eight years ago in that same theater. Then, as a member of the California Collegians, his performance consisted of impersonating a seal in a vaudeville act. Today, the man who barked for a fish ranks among Paramount's most popular stars. As Virgil Adams, we are proud to present Mr. Walter Connolly, long distinguished on the legitimate stage as well as in films. His presence here is all the more interesting in that Mr. Connolly is the first prominent performer to have been cast in that much-talked-of film, Gone with the Wind. Also from the original cast of Alice Adams is Anne Shoemaker, resuming the part of Mrs. Adams, while Benny Baker of Paramount Studios plays Walter. Our play is taken from the RKO film, based on the Pulitzer Prize novel by one of America's most beloved authors, Booth Tarkington. RKO Studios will shortly release what promises to be one of the outstanding pictures of the new year, bringing up Baby, starring Katherine Hepburn and Cary Grant. And now... The Lux Radio Theatre opens its season for 1938, presenting Claudette Colbert and Fred McMurray in Alice Adams with Walter Connolly. bedroom of a small house in New England. In the bed, propped up by pillows, is Virgil Adams. He's a worn, gray-haired man with wistful eyes and an ordinarily friendly smile. But the smile's not in evidence at the moment, for he's gazing distastefully at a bowl of soup on a tray. His wife enters with a saucer of soda crackers. Is there 
anything else you want, Virgil? Why, Virgil, you're not eating your soup. I don't want it. Oh, but you must eat it. Well, you got to get your strength back, you know. Oh. Uh... Let me fix your pillows, dear. You got to get good and strong so as you can get around and find some really good business to get into. So that's it. Hinting at that again. Oh, I'm not doing any hinting, Virgil. But of course, when you get well, you mustn't go back to that old hole again. Old hole, is it? Now, let me tell you that Lamb's is the best wholesale drug company in the state. Well, I don't care what it is. It's just an old hole as far as you're concerned. And if you don't owe it to me to look for something different, at least show it to your children. Mother? Yes, I'm coming. You look at your daughter going to a big party tonight, and she's got to wear a dress that's two years old. What? Well, how do you expect her to get anywhere? If... All right, all right. You just remember what I said, Virgil. I'd like to know uh, how I could forget it. You've been saying that for a... Oh, Mother. What? For heaven's sake, Mother, can't you wait until Father's up and around before you start to nag him? I don't nag him. Besides, I think, Alice, that I ought to know by this time how to handle your father. Yes, but, Mother... Well, he... then you handle him if you're so good at it. Go on in and see what you can do. Oh. Hello, Daddy. Oh, hello, Alice. How are you? Come in. Oh, all right. Oh, poor Daddy. Every time he's better, someone talks him into getting mad, and he has a relapse. It's a shame. Well, it's kind of funny for a man who's been in business with Lamb and Company as long as I have to hear it called an old hole. That's what your mother calls it. Why, it's a mighty pleasant place to work. Yes, but, Father, it's just that Mother feels that they don't appreciate you there. Well, they've heisted my salary every two years all the time I've worked for them. And they took your brother Walter right on as soon as I asked them last year. And old Mr. Lamb has been wonderful to me, holding my job open while I've been sick all this time. Don't you think that looks as if they thought something of me? Of course they do. It's just that it's kind of funny. When you think you've done fairly well, and the men at the office seem to think so too, it's kind of funny to have some folks think you're mostly a failure. You're not a failure, Father. You're not. I'm going to talk to Mother. No, no, you'd better not. I didn't mean to start anything. Don't worry, you didn't. Mother, I'm in the kitchen. Oh. Can I help you set the table? If you want. Mother, don't you think we're both a little selfish trying to make Father go out and look for something better? Now, after all, we've got enough. Enough? I suppose you have a limousine to take you to the dance tonight. And I suppose you've only to call the florist and order up some orchids. <laughs> oh, no. Not orchids, Mother. I like violets much better. I picked a whole bouquet in the park. The first of the season. Hmm. I suppose you picked yourself a new dress, too. My organdy dress looks like new with those flounces you put on it. What's Mildred Palmer going to wear tonight? Oh, I don't know. Her, her maid's Georgette, probably. Yes, the one she brought from Paris. Yes. Hello. Oh, there's your brother. Mother, are you sure he's going to take me to the dance tonight? Why, of course. Why shouldn't he? Oh, you know, Walter, he may have one of his mysterious dates oh, downtown. No. Don't you worry, Alice. You just leave him to me. I'll go speak to him. Hello, Walter. Hello, isn't supper ready? Now, Walter, there's no hurry. Yes, for me, I got a date. Oh, I'm so glad you remembered Mildred Palmer's dance, dear. What? I've laid out your clothes for you. Listen, I told you a week ago I wasn't going to that old dance. Oh, but Walter... Don't Walter me. I'm no society snake. I'm just as liable to go to that Palmer dance as I am to eat a couple of barrels of broken glass. Oh, but Walter, you Let got Let Alice to... get somebody else to take her. She ought to be able to get one man, I should think. She tries hard enough. Oh, be quiet, dear. She'll hear you. Oh, I now, haven't got any up. time to argue. I'll grab a bite to eat down. Tomorrow. You can't do this, Walter. You can't. Now, it's more than I can bear to see her disappointed when she's planned it for days. Why, she spent hours in Bellevue Park this afternoon gathering violets to wear because, well, she can't afford to buy a decent bouquet like the other girls. And now, now you act this way. Oh, blub. All right, I guess I'll have to go. Oh, that's a good boy, darling. You'll never be sorry. That's what you think. Let me know when dinner's ready, will you? <sighs> oh, Alice. It's all right, dear. Is it? Why, what's the matter? Nothing. But, dear, it's all right. Walt'll be glad to take you. <laughs> yes, he sounded like it. <laughs> You want to go to that dancer, don't you? Coming. Well, come on. What are you doing up there? Admiring yourself in the mirror? Just a minute. What did you say, Mr. Jones? Oh, well, just two dances. That's all you may have, and that's all for you, too, Mr. Roberts. 
What? <laughs> oh, you naughty boys. Why don't you dance with the other girls? Oh, you naughty, naughty boy. Walter. Why didn't you get one of those make-believe guys you're always talking to to take you tonight instead of dragging me? Oh, you know you just love to escort your little sister. How do I look? Just about the same. Come on, let's... Well, what's it going to be this time? What do you mean? Well, do we dance again, sit it out again, or walk around the garden again? I'm sorry if you're not enjoying it, Walter. Well, I'll bet you are. Of course I am. Don't give me that. If I wasn't here, you'd be pasted right over there against the wall. The only one who said a word to you all night was a doorman. Walter, please. <laughs> Walter, you say the funniest thing. Oh, cut it out. Nobody's watching you. Look, there's Mildred Palmer. <laughs> I said, well, if you must dance, try to step on your own feet. <laughs> hello, Mildred. Oh, hello. I just love your party, Mildred. Thank you. Well, anyway, when he came back, there was no use trying Boy, to... Boy, she was party. certainly glad to see you here. Well, I, I guess she was busy. Yeah. Look, I want to grab a smoke. Can't you flag one of those other guys to take you on for the next? You can't leave me yet, Walter. You just can't. Well, I can't stand here either. My feet are sprouting roots. See you later. Walter! Walter! Oh, please, Walter. Good evening, Alice. Hello, Mrs. Dresser. Are you looking for someone? Yes, my brother. Um, um, my escort. May I sit down here, Mrs. Dresser? Why, yes, but why aren't you dancing? Oh, I have been. I just got a chance to catch my breath. <laughs> oh, who's that? Who? That, that tall young man over there. I've never seen him around before. <laughs> I thought I knew all the handsome young men. That one is Arthur Russell. Russell? I, I don't He's believe... Mildred Palmer's cousin. A distant one, I believe. Cousin? Well, that's funny. Mildred's my intimate friend, and she never even mentioned him. That is funny, because they're engaged to be married. Oh. Or almost engaged, anyway. Oh. Oh, Alice. Alice. Yes, Mildred. Come along, Arthur. Alice, this is Mr. Russell. He wants to ask you for this dance. What? Oh, I, I mean... Are you interested? Well, well, yes. Oh, yes, I believe I am. Excuse us, please. You're not a very talkative young lady, are you? Usually, yes. And then why not now? Oh, when anyone dances as well as you do, conversation is scarcely necessary, is it? <laughs> That depends on who's talking. Oh, now, really, Mr. Russell, you can't mean me. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's all. Well, I, I wish we could dance this next together, but I guess we're both all booked up. Where's your next? Do you see him anywhere? Well, my next? Oh, yes, my next. Yeah. Well, well, as a matter of fact, I promised to sit out this next one with, with my aunt. Oh, I'll take you to her. Where is she? No, 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 don't bother, please. But you could do something. Anything. Will you see if you can find my brother Walter for me? He may be in the smoking room, if it isn't too much trouble. No, certainly not. I'll bring him back with me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mildred! What, Alice? Where's Arthur? You haven't lost him to that little full wallflower, have you? <laughs> Hardly. She did look pathetic sitting there alone. I really felt sorry for her. <laughs> oh, Miss Adams. I found him. Oh, thank you. Walter, where have you been? Thank you so much, Mr. Russell. <laughs> Not at all. It was a pleasure, Miss Adams. Thank you for the dance. <laughs> Don't ever do that again, understand? Who, uh, do what, Walter? Send somebody to find me. He found me all right, shooting dice with the boys in the cloakroom. Oh, Walter, did he see you? Unless he was blind. Oh, Walter. Oh, Walter. Well, what? <laughs> Nothing. I want to go home. <laughs> Huh? Oh, hello, Alice. What were you thinking about? Oh, just planning. Planning what to do when I'm able to go to work again. Well, what are you talking about? You're going back to your old place at Lamb's, of course. I... I heard you crying last night after the party. Oh, that was nothing. <laughs> just nerves, Daddy. Never mind, Alice. I know what was the matter. The only matter was I had a silly fit. It did me good, too. How's that? Because I've decided to do something about it. I guess it's my place to do something about it. Your mother's right, Alice. You ought to have as much as any of these girls you go with. Oh, darling, you're sweet. But uh, what I've been thinking... Well, I mean... 
I ought to be something besides just a kind of nobody. I ought to... What, darling? Well, there's one thing I'd like to do. I'm sure I could do it, too. What's that? Uh, I want to go on the stage. I know I could act. <laughs> well, what's the matter? <laughs> well, I was just reminded of your Aunt Flora and your mother when they were young. They always used to spat about which one would make the best actresses. <laughs> Sometimes I had to go out in the hall to laugh. <laughs> oh, really? But then I expect 90% of the women are sure they'd make mighty fine actresses if they ever got the chance. Yes. <laughs> yes, I suppose so. Why, what's the matter, Alice? Oh, nothing. Nothing. I, I, I've got to go downtown now. Now, you just stop worrying, darling. You're going back to Lands, and everything's going to be all right. You'll see. I hope so. I sure hope so. You uh, say you want to be a secretary, huh? Yes, I haven't had any experience, but I could learn. Well, we're just an agency, but if anything turns up, I'll let you know. Oh, thank you. Why, Mr. Russell. This is a coincidence. I've been hoping I'd meet you. Are you uh, thinking of getting a job? What? Oh, oh, heavens, no. No, I've, I've got to hire a new secretary for my father. He's been quite ill, the poor man. But now that he's better and going back to business, he'll need a second girl. Oh. Uh, may I take you someplace? Well, I was going home. Well, that's fine. I'll take you home. You know, I've been thinking about you ever since Mildred's dance. <laughs> Goodness, I think I know what you've been thinking. Are you a mind reader? You've been thinking that I'm the sister of a professional gambler, I'm afraid. <laughs> then your brother told you, huh? Very original, I thought, his uh, amusing himself with the cloakroom attendants. Yes, yes, that's it. Walter is original. He's a very odd boy. I was afraid you'd misunderstand. He tells wonderful darky stories, and he'll do anything to get them to talk to him. We think he'll probably write about them someday. He's rather literary. Are you? I, oh, 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 I'm just me. You know, you are different. From whom? Are you at your mind reading again? Yes. You know, I thought you were this sort of girl the very first moment I saw you. What sort of girl? Didn't Mildred tell you what sort of girl I am when she asked you to dance with me? Oh, she didn't ask you to dance with me. That was my idea. Oh, it... But who did she tell you I was? She just said you were a Miss Adams. A Miss Adams? Oh, I see. Well, it certainly is unfortunate that I am so different from Mildred. Why unfortunate? <laughs> because she's perfect. Why, she's perfectly perfect. Oh, yes, we all fairly adore her. She's like some big, noble, coal statue, way above the rest of us. And she hardly ever does anything mean or treacherous. Yet of all the girls I know, I believe she's played the fewest really petty tricks. You say Mildred's perfect, but... Uh... That she does do some petty tricks? <laughs> oh, men are so funny. Of course, girls all do mean things sometimes. My own career is just one long, brazen smirch of them. <laughs> Not really. What, for instance? Oh, the very worst kind. Most people bore me, particularly the men in this town, and I show it. It made me a terribly unpopular character. For instance, at the average party, I'd a lot rather find a clever old woman and talk to her than dance with nine-tenths of these non-entities. Oh, but you dance as if you liked it. Well, you dance better than any other girl at the party. Oh, thank you, Mr. Russell. Well, I, I ought to dance well when I think of my dancing teachers. All sorts of fancy instructors. I suppose... I suppose that's what daughters have fathers for, though, isn't it? To throw money away on them. Hmm. Did you take it up seriously? No, no, I've never had that particular mania. Oh, but you ought to have seen me when I had stage fever. <laughs> you know, every girl has a time in her life she's positive she's divinely talented as an actress. <laughs> yes, I, I used to play Juliet all alone in my room... Daddy used to make such fun of me. Oh, thank heaven I was only 15. I was all over it by the next year. Well, uh, here's our house. Oh. It's a queer little place, isn't it? But my father's so attached to it, the family have about given up hope of getting him to build a real house farther out. He doesn't mind our being extravagant about anything else, but he won't let us alter one single thing about his precious little old house. <laughs> well, uh, and you? I, uh... Couldn't I come in for a little while? Oh, no, not now. I... You, you can come. When? Almost any time. You, you can come in the evening if you like. Soon? 
soon as you like. Thank you. I'll, I'll make it very soon. Goodbye. Goodbye. We will go on with the second act of Alice Adams, starring Claudette Colbert and Fred McMurray with Walter Connolly. But now, in this brief intermission, we would like you to listen in with us on a home in Beverly Hills, where a wedding is underway. Jane, a popular debutante, is going to be married, and her bridesmaids are gathered together, waiting to start to the church. Oh, I hope I can't do anything. Please, do you think you'll be next? I wonder how Bob is bearing up. Well, it was a good race while it lasted. It certainly was close. <laughs> and I must say that rival of hers put up a good fight. <laughs> 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 tell from where I sat who was winning. I didn't know it was Jane until I saw her picture and the announcement in the morning paper. Well, I knew all along it would be Jane. Myra's a lamb, but cosmetic skin, well, that never struck a romantic chord in any man's heart. <laughs> You're right. Myra just couldn't compete with Jane's lovely skin. A knockout complexion like hers gets the men every time. The little bridesmaid is right. Lovely skin wins out every time. What a pity some women don't realize it. Especially when it's so easy to keep complexions clear and smooth with Lux Toilet Soap. Its active lather removes dust and dirt, stale rouge and powder thoroughly. It's when pores become choked that those tiny blemishes and enlarged pores appear. Cosmetic skin develops. Nine out of ten screen stars use Lux Toilet Soap to protect their complexions. And now, Mr. DeMille sets the scene for the next act of our play. Alice Adams, starring Claudette Colbert and Fred McMurray with Walter Connolly, continues. Three weeks have gone by. To Alice's amazement, Arthur Russell has paid her several visits. And basking in the sun of his attention, the little wallflower is beginning to blossom. He's expected again this evening. In the living room of the shabby little house, Mrs. Adams is off once more on her favorite topic. It's money, that's all. If you could dress like the other girls dress and Arthur Russell could see you then, well, there's no telling what might happen. I've tried to make your father understand that. But... Mother, what could father do at his age? Well, he could do what I've been wanting him to do for 20 years. Now, he's forbidden me to speak of it, Alice, but you may as well know. Your father has a secret formula for making the best glue in the world. The best what? Glue. For sticking things together. He and another man invented it years ago when your father first went to work at Lamb's. The other man's dead now, and that formula belongs to your father. At least it belongs to him as much as anybody else. Well, even if it does, what good is it? Can he sell it? No, but he could start up a factory and make the glue and sell that. Oh, nonsense, Mother. Why, it would take more money than father ever saw to start a factory. Well, maybe it wouldn't. Maybe it wouldn't. And I'm going to speak to him just the same. <laughs> anything of you that you can't do. Now, just a minute. What are you driving at? You know what I'm driving at. That glue formula. So that's it. Dang, dang, dang. You wouldn't care if your child dried up into a miserable old maid. Why, she's still young. She has a chance for happiness. If only she had a father who had gumption enough to be a man. Be a dirty dog, you mean? <laughs> that glue formula belongs to you as much as it does to anybody. It belongs to J.A. Lamb. He paid us all the time we were working on it. It'd be like stealing, and you know it. And what's he stolen from you? Twenty years ago, he promised to do something with that formula, to take you into partnership with him, and has he done it? Has he? You've broken your word never to speak to that of me again. Oh, what do I care for my word? Do you suppose I'll let my word keep me from struggling for a little happiness for my children? Well, I'll struggle for that till I die. Your daughter's sitting out there on the porch right now with a young man who's just asked her to go to Henrietta's party with him. How do you know? I heard him. And do you know what she said? She said no, because she had to stay close to home because you were sick. But what she meant was, I can't go because I haven't been invited, because I haven't any clothes, because we're poor, poor. <laughs> Mother, Daddy, for heaven's sake, what's the matter? Alice, can you get her out of here? Oh, Daddy, please, Mother. Wait. Alice, come here. She says you have a mean life. Is that right? Why, no, Father. Do you hear a lie? Look at me, Alice. Things like this Henrietta Lamb party now. Is that so hard to bear? 
No, no, Father. You hear her? She's lying. She's afraid to hurt you. All right, all right. I'll open the glue factory. If it takes every penny we have, I'll open it. But heaven help us if it doesn't pay, that's all. Now get out of here. Both of you. Get out of here. Shall we sit this one out, Alice? Oh, yes, please. Oh, it was so nice of you to bring me here. I think public dances are so much more interesting than those stodgy private affairs, don't you? Of course they are. <sighs> what are you thinking of? I don't know. I think I was being sort of sadly happy just then. Sadly happy? Don't you know? Only children can be just happily happy. <laughs> I think when we get older, our happiest moments are like this one. It's like that music. Oh, so sweet, but so sad. But what makes it sad for you? I don't know. Perhaps it's a kind of useless foreboding I seem to have pretty often. I'm afraid I'll miss these summer evenings with you when they're over. Do they have to be over? Oh, everything's over sometime, isn't it? Why should they be? Oh, good heaven. There's a laconic eloquence. Uh, almost a proposal in a single word. What? Oh, I didn't, uh, I mean... Oh, never mind. I shan't hold you to it. No, something will interfere. Somebody will, I mean. People talk about one another fearfully in this town. Oh, no, I... And they don't stop at the truth. They make up things. <laughs> yes, they really do. <laughs> well, what difference does it all make? It's just that I, I'd rather they didn't make up things about me to you. I'd know they weren't true. Oh, but you must be careful not to mix up the girl you might hear somebody talking about with the me I honestly try to make you see. If you do, all this will be spoiled. It's so easy to spoil anything that's pleasant. We won't let that happen. Wouldn't it be pleasant if two people could just keep themselves to themselves? I mean, if they could manage to be friends without people talking about them. Well, we've done pretty well about that so far. And if you want our summer evenings to be over, you'll have to drive me away yourself. Nobody else could? No. Well, I won't. Oh, Alice. Oh, you kissed me. I, I couldn't help it. Did you mind? Oh, no. Well, I, I mean... Well, no. Going out with Mr. Russell again tonight? Mm-hmm. As soon as I finish the dishes. Oh, that's nice. Do you know, Alice, I think it's time your father and I showed some interest in Mr. Russell. Why, well, I actually don't believe he's ever been inside the house. No, he hasn't. We've always sat out on the porch. It's so much nicer. Well, I was thinking we could hardly put off asking him to dinner or something much longer. Oh, Mother, must we? Well, don't you see? It looks so queer not to do something. It looks so kind of poverty-stricken. Very well. I'll ask him if you think I've got to. We can get that colored girl in, Melina Burns, and she can serve for us, and... You can get flowers for the table and put some in the living room and we'll have a nice dinner. Something real stylish. Oh, please, Mother. Can't, can't we just wait for a while? But, Alice, why should we? Unless you don't want Mr. Russell to meet your father and mother. Oh, no. No, it isn't that, only... Oh, what's the use? Well, Alice, what do you mean? I don't know. He's so honestly what he is. Just simple and good and intelligent... I feel like a tricky mess beside him. I don't see why he likes me. Sometimes I'm afraid he wouldn't if he really knew me. Oh, darling, he'd just worship you. I know he would. Oh, Mother, you're sweet. Well, sit down, Arthur. You're certainly a stranger around here these days. I'm sorry, Mildred. I, I've been pretty busy. You'll stay for dinner, Arthur. Well, I'd like to, Aunt Madge, but I, I have a dinner engagement already. Oh, I see. Oh, what's the difference? Look, Arthur, I've just been making up a list of guests for my garden party. I wonder if I ought to invite Alice Adams. Huh? You remember her. You danced with her. Here. Oh, uh, oh yes. A rather too conspicuous young woman, the Adams girl. I wonder if what they're saying about her father is true. I imagine it must be. Well, uh, what is it? Oh, nothing much. Just that I heard that this Virgil Adams had stolen some kind of glue formula from Mr. Lamb. Stolen it? Yes. It's quite...
quite upset Mr. Lamb, too. Mr. Adams has been his clerk for over 25 years. And Mr. Lamb has been carrying him and his son Walter along, even though they've been dead weight to the firm. Then, to show his gratitude, Mr. Adams walked off with a glue formula. Oh, well, I suppose you have to expect those things from people like the Adams. I don't think I'll ask her mother. I wouldn't if I were you. A pushing sort of girl, a very pushing little person. Oh, but I'm afraid all this is rather boring to Arthur. What? Oh, I, I beg your pardon. I, uh, I was just thinking about something. Melina? Yes, Miss Adams? Melina, as soon as the doorbell rings, you answer it. Now, that'll be Mr. Russell. You take his hat and show him in the living room. Yes, um... And then you go right out in the kitchen and you bring in the hors d'oeuvres. Uh, uh, the what, Miss Adams? The hors d'oeuvres. Uh, uh, yes, um... And Melina, you remember to have the... Mother! Oh, my goodness. Yes, dear? Coming, dear? What's the matter? Mother, it's almost seven. He'll be here soon. Well, I know, dear, but everything's ready. And, Mother, for heaven's sake, will you ask Melina to take the chewing gum out of her mouth before she serves? Yes, dear, I'll tell her about it right now. Alice, will you fix this collar for me? I never could get into a boiled shirt. Oh, Daddy, it's all wilted already. Well, I can't help it. It's hot tonight. Now, 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 stand still. Say, what's that smell? Is it fashionable to have cabbage for company dinner? That isn't cabbage. It's Brussels sprouts. What are they? Oh, there's the bell. Melina! Melina! Now, where is she? What was that? I don't know. It sounded like something... Mother! Mother! Oh, dear. Mother! Oh, it's all right, dear. Everything's all right. What was that noise? Well, Melina fell down the cellar step. Oh. But she's all right, dear. I'll answer it myself. No, dear, no. I'll go down. Now, you hurry down, Virgil. All right. Give me a chance. Well. Good evening. Oh, do come right in, Mr. Russell. I'm Mrs. Adams, and I'm so glad to receive you informally this way in our own little home. Thank you. I'm afraid you'll think it's almost too informal, my coming to the door, but... Unfortunately, our maid just had a little accident. Oh. Uh, sit down, Mr. Russell. Oh, thank you. It's been quite warm today, hasn't it? Why, uh, yes. Uh, but, You're the uh, only person I know who doesn't mind the heat the way other people do is Alice, but then she's so amiable, she never minds anything. It's just her character. Mm-hmm. I think character is the most important thing in the world, after all, don't you, Mr. Russell? Uh, yes, Mrs. Adams. Mm-hmm. Why, here's Alice now. Mother, do you suppose... Oh, Mr. Russell, how do you do? Hello, Alice. Oh, how terrible of me to be so late coming down. <coughs> oh, come, come in, Father. This is my father, Mr. Russell. Well, how do you do, Mr. Adams? Oh, uh, how are you? Well, I guess dinner's more than ready. We'd better go sit down. No, no, not yet, Virgil. Huh? What's that? Oh, it's, uh, it's Melina. She had a little accident before. Come in, Melina. Does anybody want some of these here things? What's these? Sandwiches? Before dinner? Uh, do have some of these up there, Mr. Russell. Uh, thank you. Father, you'll have some? All right, I'll try anything once. Oh, Father. <laughs> oh, it's too bad we can't offer you what ought to go with this, Mr. Russell, but we never have any liquor in the house. Father's a teetotaler. Uh, <coughs> what? Father, what's the matter? Supper's ready. Come and get it. Oh, oh dinner. <laughs> Come along, Mr. Russell. Uh, thank you. Uh, I hope you won't hate us for making you dine with us in such fearful weather. Oh, I'm nearly dying of the heat myself, so you have a fellow sufferer if that pleases you. Will you sit there, Mr. Russell? Uh, thank you. Where's Walter? Oh, poor Walter. He's probably been delayed at the office. Really, Father, you shouldn't permit him to work so hard, particularly in weather like this. But that boy's so ambitious, I suppose you simply can't stop him. Who, Walter? Why, oh, yes. You mean our Walter? <laughs> I never thought that... I do have some bread, Mr. Russell. Thank you. Melina? Yes, um... Will you please take this soup away? It's much too warm for soup this evening. I'm really surprised you even thought of it. Yes, ma'am, I was too, but, but Miss Adams... Well, you can take uh, mine too, please. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, how unfortunate we didn't have something iced and jellied instead. I'm afraid we let the servants do too much as they like, Mother. Perhaps we should get new ones. 
servants are such a problem for us, Mr. Russell. Oh, is that so? Do you want some of this, Miss Adams? Oh, thank you, Melina. Do you want some, Miss Adams? What is it? Brussels sprouts, dear. Oh, so these are Brussels sprouts, then. Well, they certainly smell up the house. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, it is warm, isn't it? Oh, what a funny thing weather is. Now, yesterday it was cool. The angels had started it, started it, I guess. But today, oh... Yeah. Oh, 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 dear. Will you have some more coffee, Mr. Russell? Thank you. So what's happened to the ice cream, Alice? It's all soupy. Oh, you know, Father simply must have a heavy meal in the evening. He works so hard in his terrible old factory. Oh, terrible new factory, I should say. And he needs lots of food to keep his strength up. I don't see why businessmen can't leave most of the detail to their secretaries. Secretaries, Alice? You know, I may be needing one of them soon. Never thought I'd one day be having one of my own. Sort of gives man a feeling of importance, don't it? <laughs> Won't you have some more coffee, Mr. Russell? I, uh, I just had some, thank you. Oh, yes, of course. Hey, Pop, what the... Why, why, it's Walter. Come in. You remember Mr. Russell? Oh, why, sir. Come here, Pop, I gotta speak to you. Pardon me, I guess my boy wants to see me. Pardon me, Mr. Russell. Oh, now, what was all that, I wonder? Oh, Walter's such a funny boy. He's so abrupt and unexpected. But, of course, you know that about him, Mr. Russell. I suppose all talented people are a bit peculiar. It's part of their charm, really. I tell you, Pop, I just gotta have that dough. Now, don't say you got that. I tell you, I ain't got it. Perhaps well, I'd better go and see if Walt has had his dinner. You'll I excuse me, won't you? Uh, certainly. Well, we seem to be left alone. Shall we go out on the porch? If you want. Please sit down. Thank you. Oh, dear, cheer up. Your fearful duty's almost done. You can run home as soon as you want to. What? That's what you're dying to do. Oh, not at all. You're upset about something. Oh, well, not at all. <laughs> What's the matter, little boy? Tell Alice. Nothing. Nothing's the matter. Of course, one is rather affected by such weather as this. It may make one a little more quiet than usual. Maybe it's this ugly little house. Maybe it's the furniture or Mother's vases that upset you. Or was it Mother herself or Father? Nothing upset me. You say that because you're too kind or too conscientious or too embarrassed or anyhow too something to tell me. I wonder if they haven't done it after all. I don't understand. I wonder who has been talking about me to you after all. Isn't that it? Oh, not at all. Oh, please don't say not at all again. You're not good at deceiving. I'm not deceiving. I... No, never mind. Do you remember saying that nothing anybody else could do would ever keep you from coming here? But if you left me, it would be because I drove you away myself. Yes, it was true. But I haven't driven you away. And you, you've gone. I don't know what you mean. Oh, do you know, I have the strangest feeling. I feel as if I were going to be with you only about five minutes more in all the rest of my life. Why, no. Uh, of course I'm coming to see you often. I... No, I've never had a feeling like this before. Just so, that's all. You're never coming here again. Why, it's finished, isn't it? Why, it's all over, isn't it? Yes. Alice, I'm afraid you're awfully tired and nervous. I, I really ought to be going. Yes, of course you ought. There's nothing else for you to do. When anything is spoiled, people can't do anything else but run away from it. Goodbye. Well, at least we'll only, only say good night. Walter, you don't mean it. You can't. Oh, now, now, there's no use wailing about it. I couldn't help it, I tell you. Walter, Walter. Don't look so startled, Mr. Russell. We have lots of little arguments in this house. It all comes under the heading of a happy family life. Alice, Alice, listen. Oh, please go, please. Don't make it any worse than it is. You, you know what I am. You, you know that everything I've said and everything I've done has been a lie. I'm just nothing, a nobody. I, I don't blame you for running away. I don't blame you. We pause for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.
In this intermission, before raising the curtain on the third act of Alice Adams, we hear from George Harrell. Every picture studio has its own staff of portrait photographers, but when they want really exceptional portraits, they call in Harrell. They've come to him in the past few weeks alone from MGM, Paramount, Warner Brothers, 20th Century Fox, and Selznick International. In Hollywood, they say that Harrell is to a portrait camera what Rembrandt was to paint and canvas. Suppose, Mr. Harrell, someone like the Alice Adams of our play walks into your studio for a sitting. A girl who's a wallflower. What can you do to help such a girl? Well, Mr. DeMille, let's forget the camera for a moment and get into a little elementary psychology. The difference between a wallflower and a girl who's always surrounded by admirers is a matter of personality. One is neutral, uninteresting. The other is vibrant, attractive. That's not news to anyone... But what may be news is the fact that a good photograph can take the wallflower type of girl and definitely bring out what she herself has failed to discover. It can make that neutral personality glamorous, alluring, beautiful. Very nice words, George, but exactly how is this done? Well, to begin with, Mr. DeMille, I'd spend a lot of time with an, with an Alice Adams type of girl before placing her near a camera. I'd try to show her how to dress properly and attractively, how to wear her hair, how to walk, and how to stand. Little things that create grace and charm. I can see that you who take pictures face the same problem as we who make pictures. That's right, Mr. DeMille. And the similarity continues. Most of our picture stars are not technically perfect. Some will have a square jaw or a cleft chin or any one of a dozen minor imperfections. But instead of denying them, they do just the opposite. Through proper makeup clothes and hairdress, they turn those little flaws into definite assets that spell individuality. In such a group, I'd place your own new star, Francesca Gall, Catherine Hepburn, Betty Davis, Marion Hopkins, and they are only a few. It's character, you see, that makes both a good portrait and a movie star. Character is intangible, but through the skillful use of three things available to every photographer, you can definitely make every portrait an interesting and compelling character study. Those three things are careful lighting, composition, and emphasis on skin texture. Skin that is properly photographed gives a lifelike effect that nothing else can duplicate. So you see, complexion is part of my business. I've asked many questions about it, and I can safely say that Lux Soap is by far the favorite method used by Hollywood stars to keep their complexions in perfect condition. And I can recommend it to our listeners because I've had close contact with its splendid results during the 10 years I've been in Hollywood. Well, we're grateful for your advice, George. But after all, you must have certain little tricks all your own that make your pictures so outstanding. Why don't you break down and tell us a couple of Harrell camera secrets? Well, a photographer must learn exactly when to snap the button that takes the picture. He shouldn't be afraid to spend hours in experiment, and on the other hand, if he gets what he wants quickly, he should have enough confidence in himself to stop. I once took 72 pictures of Wallace Beery in 45 minutes. I've also found that music can be very helpful in establishing mood, again proving the importance of psychology. I have a phonograph playing all the time during uh, sitting and during the time I'm taking a portrait. The music will range from hot jazz to a Beethoven symphony. Whatever happens to best fit the individual and bring out a quality that otherwise might not register. Then I'll do some really crazy things. I'll scream, whisper, kick a chair over, dance, fall on my face, almost anything to make the face of my subject come across with the exact expression I want. But I never let go of the bulb that snaps the picture. There's the method in my madness, and there you have it. If you don't mind making a fool of yourself, you're apt to get some pretty good results. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, George, and good night. Back to Claudette Colbert, Fred McMurray, and Walter Connolly and Alice Adams. It's the same evening, just a few minutes later. Leaving Arthur on the porch, Alice ran back into the house, to the living room, where the family argument is still raging. Oh, Walter, Walter, how could you do it? Well, I asked Dad for the money last week, but he wouldn't give it to me. Give it to you? Where was I going to get it? Father, Mother, what's the matter? What's happened? Walter's short in his accounts down at Lance. He, he took $150. $150? Why? What for? Well, a guy, a friend of mine, he got in a jam, and he said he'd pay me back before the end of the month, but he didn't, and the auditor's already started on the books down at the office. Oh, Walter, you can't go to jail. You can't. Wait, Mother, Mother, don't be so upset. Perhaps Mr. Lamb won't prosecute. In him not prosecute? 
Why, that's just what he's been waiting for all the time. He thinks I cheated him. He was just letting Walter walk right into a trap. But if you raised the money and paid it back... Oh, I'll pay him back all right. Every cent. Every last penny. I can raise it. I'll... I'll put a loan on my factory. Well, I'm sorry, Dad. Don't you talk to me, you little idiot. Oh, don't, Virgil. Poor Virgil. Poor Walter. And to have this come on the night of your sister's dinner. Oh, poor, poor Alice. Don't say poor Alice. I'm all right. Oh, oh no, Mother, oh. hush. Please don't, dear. The police... What? Quiet. Shh. I'll answer it. Now, you stay right here, all of you. No matter what it is. I'll take care of this myself. Who... Who is it? This is J.A. Lamb. Mr. Lamb? Hello, Adams. Hello, Mr. Lamb. Well, can I come in? Yes, yes, sure. Come in. I want to talk to you. Yes, yes, me too. Sit down. I'll stand, thank you. I wouldn't even have set foot in this house except that I wanted to tell you to your face just how I felt. A fine family you turned out to be after all these years. I'll pay you back every cent Walter took, Mr. Lamb, just as soon as I can get the money. I was just going down now to try and raise a loan on... on my glue works. Your glue works? Huh. I always thought you had to show people some business prospects to raise a loan. Naturally. Well, you may find that just a little difficult, especially now that I'm starting a glue works of my own. What's that? Yes, indeed. And very convenient to your place, too. Fact is, it's right across the street. Twice as big and twice as modern. You... you... you ruined me. Well, what did you expect me to do, Virgil Adams? Let you walk off with that formula like swallowing a pat of butter? Oh, I know what you thought. You said to yourself, here's this old fool, J.A. Lamb. He's in his second childhood, and I can put this thing over on him. I did not. I worked years on that formula. It was just as much mine as yours. What's that? And, 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 and anyway... A lot you know about my feelings and what I said to myself. But there's one thing I want to say to you right now. I don't feel mean anymore about what I've done. Because there's a meaner man in the world than I am. And that man is you, Mr. Lamb. You've spiked my business, all right. Now I can't even raise the money to keep my son out of the penitentiary. That's what you wanted, wasn't it? Are you accusing me of... Look at me. Look at me. I worked all my life for you... And what I did when I quit didn't make two cents worth of difference in your life. And it looks like it'd mean all the difference in the world to my family. You think I did you a bad turn. And now you got me ruined for it. And my family ruined. And if, if anybody had told me last year that I'd have said such a thing, I'd have called him a danged liar. But I do say it, Mr. Lang. I do say it. You're a doggone mean man. Father, stop, please. You'll be sick again. No, I won't. I, I, I got to tell him what I think. No, Father, uh, please now, go upstairs, darling. Go on. No, no, go let me, on. let me, let me go. Let me. It's, it's all right. He's got me ruined, and all of us ruined. If it has, it serves you right. He's a doggone mean man. Now look here, you, you, you... Mr. Lamb, please, please, just a moment. I don't want you to leave thinking too badly of Father. He couldn't have meant what he said just now. I... I guess he's so overwrought that he just lost his head. Overwrought? Well, I shouldn't wonder, that danged old fool. Yes, I guess he is an old fool. What's that? For listening to us. Mother and me. Oh, it's all my fault. This whole terrible mess. All my fault. Now, look here, young woman. I, I guess maybe you're a bit overwrought yourself. No, I'm not. I'm all right. I'm just talking the truth for once. What are you talking about? You see, Mr. Lamb... Mother was always after Father and after him to make more money for me so that I could have lovely things like other girls. Well, like your granddaughter, Henrietta, Mr. Lamb. I guess parents will make any sacrifice to see their children happy. And when Father saw how unhappy I was, he, he did what he did. Oh, he always wanted to go back to work for you. I guess he almost worshipped you, Mr. Lamb. And if he had, he could have kept an eye on Walter. And that's another thing, Mr. Lamb. Walter didn't steal that money. He just borrowed it. Oh, he did? Yes, to help a friend who was in trouble. Well, I guess... Uh, Mr. Lamb, if you'll give us just a little time, I'll get a job and pay you back what Walter owes you. Really, I will. I know I haven't much, had much experience, but I can do things. I was good at arithmetic and English in school. I, I won a prize in English once, and I'd make a good secretary for someone. 
I'm much more sensible about things now. And if you'll only give us a little time, will you, Mr. Lamb? Please. Alice, that, that father of yours, he, he did me an injustice tonight. I never meant to hurt nobody, and he knows it. Oh, of course he does. But I... Well, I guess maybe I've been in the wrong, too. I lost my head. Never knew that glue formula meant so much to him. And I wouldn't hurt nobody, Alice, and I never even thought of prosecuting Walter. I know. Now, your father and I, we, 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 we've been together for a long time. Well, well, maybe we can come to some sort of an arrangement about the glue works. Uh, yes, maybe a, a sort of a partnership. Oh, Mr. Lamb. Hmm. Well, can I see him now? Oh, yes, of course you can. And thank you so much. <laughs> Alice. Why, what are you doing down here in the dark? Nothing. Your father and Mr. Lamb just fixed everything, Alice. I, I know, I'm glad. Everything will be all right now, won't it? Everything except Alice. What about Mr. Russell? Oh, oh, he left before anything happened. Everything's all right. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, my poor baby. He's gone, isn't he? It doesn't matter. And that dinner? Oh, Alice, can you ever forgive your poor mother? Mother, there's nothing to forgive, darling. It's just the way things are. You know, it's all so clear to me now. You, you do thus and so, and you tell yourself, now... Seeing me do thus and so, people will naturally think this and that. But in the end, they don't. They think something else. Usually, just what you don't want them to. <laughs> I suppose about the only good in pretending is the fun we get out of fooling ourselves is that we fool somebody else. Alice, I don't know what you... No, no, you, you run on to bed now, darling. I'm going to sit on the porch for a while. All right, dear. Good night, Alice. Good night, Mother. for your thoughts, Alice. Arthur, you, you came back? I didn't go. I've been out here all the time. Why? I was waiting for you. But I thought... Oh, then you were here Yes, when... I heard everything, and, and what's more... I... You heard? Arthur. Let me finish. I heard a great deal this afternoon, too, at Miller's. So they did talk about me. Yes, and it's all opened my eyes to one thing. I love you, Alice. What? Didn't you hear me? I love you. You... You love me? You love me? Yes, darling. Oh. Oh, gee whiz. Goodbye to Alice Adams. But our stars return now for a brief reunion. I won't be surprised if later this month I hear that the French people have declared a national holiday. For Claudette Colbert is about to return to their shores. Taking her first real vacation in years, she leaves this week for a few months abroad. And so, Claudette, je vous souhaite un bon voyage sans mal de mer. Pretty good, eh? <laughs> That's marvelous. Well, in case there's any doubt in your mind, I wish you a pleasant trip without seasickness. My intentions are better than my French. <laughs> Thank you very much, C.B. I haven't been back for eight years, so you see, I'm terribly excited about it. And it's not only a vacation. I'm going to school. I I'm going straight to the Hans Schneider School in the Tyrolean Alps and learn how to ski. After that, if I'm still able to stand on my feet, I'm going to Paris and really have some fun. Now, I also want to thank the people who make Lux Soap and give us this program. You know, in pictures... One has to be especially careful about appearance. I know I am, and that's why I'm always glad to tell you that I think Lux Soaps is, a, is about the most dependable complexion care in the world. It's so easy to use, and it does keep the complexion smooth and clear. Thank you again, C.B., and good night. Good night, Claudette. <laughs> Among the questions most frequently asked about Hollywood is what do the stars do in their spare time? with two such typical citizens as Fred McMurray and Walter Connolly to assist in the proceedings, perhaps we can find a few answers now. 
Fred, I suppose you're still clinging to the saxophone. Well, no, CB. I'm afraid the old horn is getting a little rusty these days. I, I've been following in your, in your footsteps lately, and I've uh, sort of taken a fancy for target shooting. In fact, I built a shooting gallery in the base of my house. It's a little hard on the neighbor's ears, but... Uh... Yes, but of the two noises, I dare say they prefer the bullets to the bullets. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. They call me Three Gun Mac Murray. <laughs> Why Three Gun? The best shots in history seem satisfied with the title Two Gun. Well, uh, you see, Two Guns aren't enough. I usually have to empty three before I hit the target. But uh, what about you, Walter? What do you do to pass the time? Well, for a couple of weeks, Fred, I'll be engaged in the most fascinating occupation in the world, doing nothing. I've just completed one picture, and the next one isn't quite ready. No lines to memorize, no makeup to worry about, no getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Just plain, unadulterated, delicious indolence. Apart from a rather regular attendance at Santa Anita track trying to pick the winners. But a bit more seriously... I've been startled and pleased, too, to see what some of our more exemplary Hollywood personalities do with their spare time and money. Victor McLaughlin is probably just as busy off the screen as he is on. He has a sports stadium, he drills and manages a troop of 2,000 horsemen, and sponsors a championship group of motorcycle riders. Adrian, the designer, spends his leisure in an antique shop. Eddie Cantor owns a couple of gift stores. Charles Bickford has an interest in a beauty parlor. Charlie Ruggles is a dog fancier. And uh, Reginald Denny designs and markets model airplanes. And uh, Fernand Garvey is probably one of the world's outstanding miniature fans. He likes French history and has made over a thousand miniature hats copied from old patterns and has also molded some 15,000 toy soldiers, accurate uh, replicas of old French regiments. And, of course, Adolf Manju is noted for his stamp collection and Dvorak for her walnut grove and Jean Herschel for his first editions. Now, the tendency now is to divide their time between the racetrack and the soundtrack. <laughs> with stars like Pat O'Brien, Bing Crosby, Barbara Stanwyck, and Joe E. Brown all teaching their horses to look well in a photo finish. Well, don't forget, don't, <laughs> don't forget Walter, C.B. He's supporting a couple of bang tails himself, you know. And they're just about eating me out of hay and oats, too. <laughs> but they'll both get a chance to prove how much they love me a little later this season when they start at Santa Anita. In the meantime, Fred, if you and Mr. DeMille happen to miss the target and shoot a bunny... Don't forget, I'm always in the market for a good rabbit's foot. Good night. Good night, Walter. Good night, C.B. Good night, friends. Good night, Walter. Thank you, Miss Colbert, Mr. McMurray, and Mr. Conway. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your announcer, Melville Ruiz. Don't miss the announcement of next week's Stars and Play, which Mr. DeMille brings you in a moment. In tonight's cast were Winifred Harris as Mrs. Palmer, Lou Merrill as Mr. Lamb, Georgette Spelvin as Mildred Palmer, Grace Kern as Ella, Verna Felton as Mrs. Dresser, and Frank Nelson as an employment agent. Miss Colbert will be seen next in the Paramount picture, Bluebeard's Eighth Wife. Benny Baker's current film is Hold'em Navy. Walter Connolly appeared through courtesy of Columbia Pictures. His new film is Penitentiary. Louis Silvers is from 20th Century Fox, where he was in charge of music for Love and Hisses. And now, here's Mr. DeMille. One of the most magnificent singers in modern times comes to the Lux Radio Theater next Monday night. From the concert stage, in opera, on the radio... And in motion pictures, her voice has thrilled the world. The voice of Grace Moore. Your endless requests bring her back to this stage. This time in a grand comedy which met with great favor on stage and screen. Enter, madame. Our leading man will be Melvin Douglas. Seen in several of the year's best pictures. Most recently in Grace Moore's new film. And as a special guest, Mr. Edward Arnold. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Grace Moore and Melvin Douglas in Enter, Madame, with Edward Arnold as the evening's added personality. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.